Maddie, I want to quickly rewind to something that you mentioned, because I think you'll have a lot of insight and you'll be able to help people out with this. Um, you mentioned that you know you did have a former eating disorder in the past, and now you're doing bodybuilding. How, because there, there are a lot of people who do bodybuilding and dealt with those types of things, but how do they know? And what are some signs that themselves or other people around them can keep in mind um, so that they know that they're not falling back into those habits? Hmm. The main reason I ask this is because I know a lot of people who will perpetually prep. You know, they'll do a prep. Mm. They'll say, okay, I'm going to do an off season. Right. It's not really an off season. <clears throat> they gain a little bit of fat. And they're like, okay, I'm going to prep again. Yeah. I want to do better this season. But you know, it, it's, it turns into a pattern. So what do people need to keep in mind so that they don't end up having that negative cycle? Mm. I think a really important thing um, is honesty within yourself and within the people around you. When I decided that I was going to do bodybuilding, I had a conversation uh, with Luke and a conversation with my best friend. And I said, I want to do this thing, uh, but my life and my sanity and my well-being, you know, that's, that's too much of a cost. So here are some things that you can like see from me as a red flag. Um, and it is my job to be honest with you about how that feels. Um, what are some of those things? Because I, I would assume that they parallel between other people. Definitely. So certain things like if you're like binging or something, some people have that issue or they they maybe eat a little bit too much and then they have to go train extra the next day or they delay their first meal or they cut out carbs from another meal trying to make up for it where they're like mental state is so fully bound within this like physical goal that they can't even separate it themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a really big one or like, hmm. I think body checking is a really, really big thing. Um, we are constantly like looking in the mirror and of course in a prep, like you, you are doing that. Um, but there comes a point where you're not doing that in a really healthy or helpful way um, where if you're looking at yourself and, not being positive or, or helpful or in the way that you speak about yourself or to other people or like I'm fat or whatever. Yeah, um, all you're seeing is your chub. Yeah. You're like, I just got extra chub on me. You're not <laughs> noticing a delt to the triceps or anything good. Yeah, exactly. But I also think that finding a coach who is conscious of those things is really important, making that known that this has been an issue for you in the past because for some people they aren't um, – far along enough in their recovery from an eating disorder to do something like this. Mm -hmm. An eating disorder is something that you kind of deal with your whole life. Like I personally can't look at like a banana and not know how many calories that is or like what I'd have to do to kind of burn that off. That From an eating disorder, I have a ton of mental math from mm -hmm. foods. Um, and that's not something that really, really ever leaves you. It's just something that you become more aware of um, and you're not trying to use that in a harmful way for yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think just being honest with a coach and finding somebody who is aware of that kind of thing, um, and will be honest with you when it's time to do a prep and when it's not right now, I'm kind of the heaviest I've ever been outside of powerlifting. I'm a way different body composition. I'm uncomfortable, but I've had so many conversations with my coach where I'm like, I'm uncomfortable, but Hey, we're doing this for a reason. Like if your end goal is to get better at bodybuilding, you cannot have a time period where you're just constantly prepping. That's not getting better, especially being so new at bodybuilding. I can keep evolving. I'm not, I haven't reached a point where I just need to keep doing shows because I'm not there yet. Like I, I'm not a pro. I've done a couple of shows. There's so much growing that I need to do, especially as a very new athlete. There's so much that I can take an advantage of as a new lifter mm -hmm. in this sport. Um, and I think it's really unhealthy, like you're saying, when people are doing these back-to-back -back preps and neglecting that like improvement season. So having a coach that can be honest with you about like, hey, you know, you need to pump the brakes. Like we're not even competitive right now. Like you, you didn't do well at your last show. You can't do better at this next one without this time period. Power Project Family, how's it going? Now we talk about sleep all the time on the podcast because it's one of the biggest things that helps you with your health and fitness, your recovery, your muscle gain, your fat loss, everything. That's why we've partnered with Eight Sleep for such a long time now because the technology behind the mattress allows you to track your heart rate, the amount of times it takes you to fall asleep, your tosses and turns, your heart rate variability. It changes its temperature through the night based off how you sleep, but not only yourself, but maybe your partner on the other side of the bed. It is an amazing mattress. Andrew, how can they learn more? Yes, head over to 8sleep.com slash power project. That's eight spelled out, E-I-G-H-T, sleep.com slash power project. Along with more information, you guys will actually save $150 off of your entire order automatically. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. I agree with him, by the way. You've made some amazing improvements. Thank you. Like outstanding improvements. I know 
you mentioned that at one point you weighed 80 pounds. Mm. That is just so wild. And then when I first met you, I remember what you looked like versus what you look like now. And you made such drastic improvements in your performance and what you're able to do in powerlifting. Um, you were competing at a really high level, which that was awesome to see. Thank you. You mentioned to me that you uh, first felt like a power lifter when you got slingshot knee sleeves. Yeah. That was really <laughs> awesome to hear. And kind I think of I have like a, a Snapchat saved, uh, Snapchat like thing saved of like when I got my first like, um, like how much you bench like package. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and like, I feel like a power lifter now. Yeah. I, my eating disorder got so bad. I was like 80 pounds. Um, and in my last what body. What was your eating disorder? Um, I was, I was very anorexic. Um, I just wasn't eating. And at that time I was using it. I can look back at it now for what it was. And it was just a control thing. Uh, I had so much like chaos growing up. Um, I mentioned to you that I had, I had a sexual assault when I was really young and there was so much mentally that I needed to control that was taken away from me. And the only thing that I could control at that point was how much food I was consuming. Like nobody else could really do that for me. So that was, that was what I could do. I could take my body back by controlling its, its nutrients. Um, but with bodybuilding, um, it's been really cool to, kind of look at that as a blessing. Like you can look at that as a way that you're really micromanaging and that's an eating disorder because you need to eat every three hours and this amount and you're weighing it. And I have looked at it as a way of like, I specifically know how to fuel this machine I have. I know now when I'm hungry, I have, with the eating disorder, I had lost that ability to have an appetite. And now I know what that hunger cue is. I know how to fill that. I know that when like my body needs carbs, it's going to feel like this. If it needs fat, it's going to feel like this. Um, and that feels really powerful to be able to give the machine what it wants instead of like looking at it as this very disordered, you know, you have to weigh every grain of rice. I just know every grain of rice that this body needs right now. Mm -hmm. Pat Project family, we appreciate you checking out this clip. Check out another one. This is, just go check out another one. Or comment down below and let us know what you liked about this one. But we love you guys and we're going to keep bringing you the heat. So comment, subscribe and all that good stuff. Okay, peace.